Ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to my very messy workbench. It's another late night repair video here. We are at 9.43, so rapidly approaching 10 p.m. Let's get right down to it. So, we're working on arcade games, or arcade game parts, I guess you could say, since clearly there's not an arcade game on my workbench. So, this is the focus of what we're working on. You can tell that because it's in the middle of the frame. Now, what is this from? Well, if you've ever been to any arcade ever, chances are you have played Whack-A-Mole. It is a classic arcade game. It's been around for a very long time. Well, originally, it had a compressor in it, and it, all the moles popped up using pneumatics. So, lots of valves, lots of piping, lots of actuators, very complicated, broke down a lot. So, after a while, they decided, eh, that's not such a good idea, and they got away from that. And so what they did instead is they started using electronic solenoids, and that is what these are. This is a 24 volt solenoid. It runs on a, off its own 24 volt AC power supply inside the game, actuated by a number of heavy duty relays. So there are five of these, if memory serves me correct, inside the game. And these are what makes the moles pop up. You apply uh, current to them, and there's a shaft that sits down here, when you apply the current, magnet pulls the shaft up, moles pop up. So anyway, I have two of these here. You see one has already been modified or repaired. Now, the issue I had is these two both went out, and the reason they went out is if you look closely, you can see that this wire is broken off. Now when this is in the game, this wire is being held at a complete 180 degree angle along this sharp radius and over time what happened is the wire from vibration uh, just kinda broke off. Now this one only has one wire broken this one had two, both wires broken off so what we're gonna do is we're gonna reconnect that wire now I'm sure a bunch of people are saying why not just buy a new coil? Well and a simple answer is cost. So Suzo Hap's website right here, they have a, a solenoid, but they want $331.35 per solenoid. So you're looking at about $600 to fix this game. And I could probably be well on my way to buying another one for $600. Or maybe not. I can't remember how much a whack-a-mole costs. It could be a grand. It could be a couple thousand. I haven't checked recently. But anyway... $600 for two solenoids, that's not happening. That's just way too much. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to fix the old ones, uh, which I know I can do because I've already done this one. So, the biggest problem I have here is that it's broken off right at the edge. Now, getting this apart would not be easy. Um, it appears that what they did is they uh, they had the, uh, the core, they wrapped the coil around it, and then they had this outer um, casing which was then slid over and then I guess they used a probably a hydraulic press or a crimper to crimp it around these end caps and that means that it's pretty much not just going to come apart. I, I actually tried earlier with just a hammer just trying to hit it and pound it apart like you would a bearing sorta of, and it did absolutely nothing. It went nowhere. Which means we gotta get a little more you know destructive So, to get that apart, we're going to use one of these. So, moved over to the section of the workbench with the vise, which is somehow even messier than the other section. So, you can pretty much see what the basic plan is here. I'm going to lightly cut along these lines. Uh, i got to be very careful that I don't go too deep, because if I go too deep, I'm going to start cutting into the coils, and then the entire coil unit is ruined. So, I'm just going to lightly cut along these lines just enough to get through the case and then I'll drive a punch or a wedge or something up here to get it to start bending outward then I'll grab it with a pair of pliers and just work it until it breaks off and that will give me access to the wires inside here.
think that should be enough. So let's try to open it up now. And just pry that back a little bit. And there we go. And it looks like I did not hit any of the coils. I'm going to graze this little wire right there just a tad, but I don't think that's going to be an issue. So now you can see where the wires enter, and you can see how it broke off right at the edge there. So I'm going to start peeling back all this casing and this epoxy and get these wires exposed as much as I can. So this is as far back as I want to pull this wire out. I can see that it does go all the way down in here, but it's just not necessary for me to pull it back that much. I'm only going to pull it back as much as I need to, simply because I don't want to risk damaging stuff. Also, it's just more effort when it's not necessary. So I need to gently strip this. I normally like to use um, automatic wire strippers, but they don't fit in this tiny amount of space. This one's not stripping as easily as the last one. And it's it's starting to pull out. Yeah, see this is this is the wire right where it enters the magnet coil. I don't want that pulled out, so So what I've done is I got both wires stripped and then I've hooked them around each other so I can have a secure joint and I'm going to go ahead and solder them. I already have my heat shrink on here so we'll be able to heat shrink it afterwards. So I'm going to have to solder those that hooked section to create a nice good electrical connection that's not going to fail and of course that's probably not going to be as easy as it sounds since the wire is not copper. It's, it's not tinned copper, it's not copper. It's, it looks like some kind of just silver wire or tin or aluminum or whatever it is. It's not copper, which means, in my experience, that usually means it doesn't solder very well. So the soldering's done. Go ahead and put the heat shrink on now. Now this is adhesive line heat shrink, which is 
probably overkill for something like this that isn't going to be exposed to the elements, but I'd like to have that extra adhesive just for a stronger connection in this particular situation. Go ahead and just check this with my meter real quick just to make sure it worked. And yep, we're getting a reading. Just wiggle it around here, make sure we don't have any opens, breaks in the wires or short. Yeah, looks like it should be good. So, next thing I'm going to do is we need to relocate where these wires are running. Because originally they came out the top here, but I don't want to run them out there because number one, they're going to be too big with this heat shrink on there to go out there. It's going to put too much strain on this solder joint. So I'm going to bring it down just like this. Just get that as flat as I can. Now I'm actually going to fill in all this gap with hot glue. Now for this kind of stuff, you really want to have a high temp glue gun. A really low temp glue gun just isn't going to work for this kind of thing. The glue ends up being, it's just really weak. You can pop it off of just about anything with just a quick tug. The high temp glue gun, even with regular glue sticks, you get a much better bond. So I'm going to fill this whole area in. Put another glue stick in, end up adding a little bit more hot glue. The main thing is you want to fill in this little gap here that was created when you opened it up, and you want to make sure that your wires are going to be firmly held in place. They're not going to move around a whole bunch because if they move around too much, and then they're just going to end up fatiguing and breaking again. So the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this whole end in electrical tape. And the reason I'm going to do this is just to make it look cleaner and it's also going to provide an extra layer of insulation as well as add a little more strength to the wires because them moving around too much is what caused this in the first place. So I'm just going to do two layers around this whole thing. Alright, so we have two repaired coils, so now we're going to bring this back to the arcade, stick them in, see how they work. The only issue um, that I might run into is that normally there's a notch for where these wires come around in the uh, wood frame, and this, you can see the wires bulge out a little bit there, they might not fit in that notch anymore. So I may have to make the notch in the frame uh, just a bit bigger. Not a big deal though. It's not, it's not going to harm the integrity of the frame and it's not going to uh, prevent new coils from being installed in the future. So we'll take this over, put it in, see how it works. That's not going to happen tonight though because it is late and I am not going over there this late at night. But thanks to the magic of clever editing, you will be there. Uh, very shortly. Okay, so it's been I'd say about two weeks for me and about two seconds for you. Just like I mentioned. So, we're back at the whack mole here on location. We got our repaired coils. Uh, got my impact driver. We're going to go ahead and we're just pop these right in. So they get right down to it. So we'll start with the playing field. And if your game hasn't been cleaned in a while, this is where you're going to find a lot of junk and dust built up. So I got some tickets in here, some tokens, picture. 
So we'll lift this support out. And now we can see we have all the moles here. And there's a little bit of metal dust there. I'm going to lubricate all that. So now there's a whole bunch of bolts on this uh, board that holds all the moles in. But you just want to remove the outer ones. And there's four of them except one missing from this particular game. So for me it's three. So this is the tricky part is getting the uh, entire mole assembly out. So I'll grab two of them. Just lift up. Be very careful because all the sensors are on the bottom. And yeah, some of that junk is falling. Now, balance this up here and just connect the wires. I'm going to pull this off to the side here. Okay, so with the mole assembly out of the way, get a quick peek at the inner workings of this thing. Yes, it is very dirty. These games get incredibly dirty on the inside because the holes for the moles to pop through are, of course, right in the top of the playing field. So any junk or, or garbage that happens to be on top of the playing field often gets knocked into the holes and then it just kind of gathers in this area immediately beneath them. But anyway... So looking down here, there's two power supplies. This one over here is a 12 volt power supply, the standard in arcade games. I believe this one also puts out 5 volts. I don't remember for sure on this particular game. Over here you have a 24 volt power supply. This one is to supply uh, power solely to the solenoids. If you look down here, right here behind the ticket mech, you have all the uh, relays which control the various solenoids. There, I'm going to try to angle this so you can see it. Now back there is the various control boards. I believe that one is the main board that you're looking at right there. Um, it's kind of hard for me to get a shot of these because they are mounted to the back of the board. But you, can get, you get the gist of it. And then right here, we have two fans. These fans are to blow air across the soils because they do tend to get rather warm. And then at the front here, you just got your coin mechs and your ticket mech, mechanical counters, and the speaker right at the front here. So, move on to the uh, mole assembly. So with the mole assembly out of the uh, game, you can see how it's constructed now. You got two pieces of wood, which are spaced apart by these dowels, and the wood is bolted to these dowels. And then you have your solenoids over here, and these are actually just kind of free floating. There's a inset drilled into the bottom board, and at the top, they're held in by these uh, stops at the top, but other than that, the solenoid just kind of sits there. And then there's guides for the actual uh, shaft itself. Now, these two up here are obviously the ones that are missing the solenoids. There's five in total. And at the bottom here, these are all the sensors that detect when you've hit the mole down. They are um, infrared. So you've got an emitter and a detector, I don't remember which one is which, but one of these will shine a light out and then the other picks up that light and when you push the mole down, it the uh, beam of light is broken and that's how the game knows that you've hit the mole down. So, get this spun around. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop these clips off the end of the uh, mole shaft and hopefully not lose them. And make sure to get the washers and rubber stop out in the right order. And then the other one.
I'll take the stops out of the top. So, I mentioned earlier that there's a little notch for the wires. The notch is right here. Let me see. If, yeah, you can see that. So that's where the normal notch is for the wires. So we're going to find out now if this is going to fit. It's a bit of a tight squeeze getting in there. Let's see if it's going to go in all the way. Oh, yep, it does. Oh, got the connector stuck in there. All right, it fits. Let's try the other one. And this other one's a lot tighter. I don't know that it's going to fit. So I think this one's going to have to go in from the bottom. So, actually, my little dowel pins, which I do not recommend doing because if you do this, it can be a nightmare trying to get this thing back together. But I'm going to do it because I need to get this to fit. So I don't want to unbolt this all the way. Just want enough to get that to fit in there. And there we go. So push that back together now. Put the bolts back in. Well that's annoying. The SD card filled up again. Anyway, so we're going to put the stop in here now. The coils do fit. Now, there is a roll pin on the stop that is intended to go into a little indent in the coil. So it might not go in at first. For example, if the coil is misaligned, see it won't sit flush. We'll just turn a little bit and it pops down. And the purpose of that roll pin is to keep the wires on the coil aligned with the little notch so that they don't wear out. But clearly that happened anyway. So I'll do the other one. for the mole head. So we're going to put the mole head in. Now we're going to put the uh, rubber stopper and plastic bushing on. So rubber stopper first, then the plastic bushing, and then the clip. Oh, see what I get with my fingers. Do the other one. And we'll be able to get that one on. No, I'm gonna need some pliers. Alright, so we get this. Plug in the mole heads and find the correct wires. All right, all that's left is just clean it up and put it back in the game.
so I got everything cleaned off just vacuumed all the dust out of the shop back I uh, sprayed off uh, the various sensors and some other components with the air duster so now we're going to plug this back in set it back down be just about ready I'll just set this down in there. I will need to source another screw for this at some point. About that another time. Now, before I put the playing field back on, I'm going to take the opportunity while this is a part to do a little bit of maintenance. So periodically you want to lubricate these shafts that the moles ride on. So to do that, I'm just going to take some uh, heavy duty silicon, or silicone, however you want to pronounce it, and just coat the shaft. That way they ride nice and smoothly. And I also want to get the guides here. These actually keep the most straight. One of them is missing because it broke. And I'm running out here. So we'll set the play field brace back on there. And then finally the playing field. Okay, let's try it out now. Well, it doesn't seem to be happy about something. You can probably tell that that first startup did not go the way I wanted it to. Uh, when you turn one of these on, it goes through a quick test of everything and just to make sure that everything is working correctly and it'll give you error codes if it's not and we're getting three error codes we're getting an error two an error three and an error five now i looked in all the manuals i've actually got three manuals for this all different versions and none of them tell me what those error codes mean so i took an educated guess turns out i was right so you have five moles here and they are labeled as such one two three four five now I put it in test mode which I'll show now and what was happening is it was firing this mole then this mole then this one then this one this one now it's supposed to fire them in order during the test sequence but these two were reversed now these are the ones that were repaired and uh, so that was a pretty simple fix what it was is um, I disconnected the wires for those two solenoids at the relays because I didn't when they first started having issues because I didn't want it to uh, cause any problems with the other electricals because I knew the solenoids were having problems and when I reconnected them I accidentally reversed the wires and because of that the sensors for each one was not seeing it pop up at the correct time so it gave out errors for both of those then there was the error 5, which is the 5th mole. We're going to wait for that to finish. Now the error code 5 
was because a weak solder joint on the sensor had come loose while I was working on it so the sensor wasn't reading properly so I re-soldered that and so now it goes through all of its tests everything seems to be functioning uh, fine I'm gonna actually go ahead and run it through the test mode now so you can see that it is working okay so this is test mode and what it's doing is it's cycling all the mole heads in order and it feeds a few tickets out at the end of each cycle so you see they're all cycling properly now and when I hit the test button again it will exit test mode and if it had any issues it will give us an error code for those so I'm going to do that now So there's no error codes. Looks like everything's good. There's only one more thing to do now. Time for the true test. Let's play Whack-A-Mole! I'm going to blame my poor performance on the fact that I'm holding a camera. So that's it for this. It's getting late. I'm going to take off. I'll see you next time.